Greetings, delegates and guests. I'm Sean O'Brien, General President of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. Today, the Teamsters are here to say we are not beholden to anyone or any party. American workers own this nation. We are not renters. We are not tenants. But the corporate elite treat us like squatters, and that is a crime. We've got to fix it. What could be more important to the security of our nation than a long-term investment in the American worker? It's time for both sides of Congress to stand their butts up. We will create an agenda and work with a bipartisan coalition ready to accomplish something real for the American worker. We need to call the Chamber of Commerce and the business roundtables what they are. They are unions for big business. And here's another fact. Against gigantic multinational corporation, an individual worker has zero power. It's only when Americans band together in democratic unions that we win real improvements on wages, benefits, and working conditions. Working people know our system is broken. The elites are not laboring on behalf of workers. There is a political caste system that prevents citizens from accessing their representatives to hold them accountable. We need legal protections that make it safer for workers to get a contract. We must stop corporations from abandoning local communities to inflate their bottom line. We need meaningful bankruptcy reform. Today, corporate vultures buy up companies like Yellow Freight with the intent of driving them into bankruptcy and feasting on their remains. The courts leave workers begging for crumbs as third tier creditors. Labor law must be reformed. Americans vote for a union but can never get a union contract. Companies fire workers who try to join unions and hide behind toothless laws that are meant to protect working people but are manipulated to benefit corporations. This is economic terrorism at its best. An individual cannot withstand such an assault. A fired worker cannot afford corporate delays, and these greedy employers know it. There are no consequences for the company, only the worker. We need corporate welfare reform. Under our current system, massive companies like Amazon, Uber, Lyft, and Walmart take zero responsibilities for the workers they employ. These companies offer no real health insurance, no retirement benefits, no paid leave, relying on underfunded public assistance. And who foots the bill? The individual taxpayer. The biggest recipients of welfare in this country are corporations, and this is real corruption. We must put workers first. Since the end of the pandemic, when was the last time you heard major news outlets regularly to refer to workers as essential? You haven't. The men and women who provide goods and services, deliver packages, stock grocery shelves, care for patients, pick up your trash, and keep our communities safe are taken for granted. All the while, the stock market booms, housing prices hit record highs, and corporate salaries skyrocket. But the income of everyday Americans are shrinking in the face of inflation. At the gas pumps, at the grocery store, with the electrical bill, and with the car insurance, this has got to change. Companies like Amazon, are bigger than most national economies. Amazon is valued over $2 trillion. That makes it the 14th largest economy in the world. What is sickening is that Amazon has, been, has abandoned any national allegiance. Amazon's sole focus is on lining its own pockets. Remember, elites have no party, elites have no nation. Their loyalty is to the balance sheet and the stock price at the expense of the American worker. There are far too many people on both sides of the aisle still caught up in knee-jerk reactions to unions, who subscribe to the same tired claptrap that unions destroy American companies. 
Take a moment to consider United Postal Service, which is the largest private sector logistics company, and it's been unionized for more than 100 years. More than 350,000 Teamsters make it run. We work for good middle-class wages, quality health care, and secure pensions. There are work rules that ensure fairness and due process for both sides. UPS is the most efficient package delivery company in the world. But let's not forget that UPS doesn't provide these great wages and benefits out of the kindness of its heart. UPS does it because the Teamsters fight for it, all 350,000 of us. I see well-intentioned people arrive in Washington and get eaten up by an unforgiving system. The responsibility to average Americans takes a back seat. The hill crawls with lifers, bouncing from government jobs to corporate jobs and back again. I think we can all agree D.C. is a pretty treacherous area. Most legislation is never meant to go anywhere, and it's all talk. And in America, talk isn't cheap. It's very expensive, and it comes at the cost of our own country. I challenge each and every one of you, and especially my friends on the Democratic side, to embrace cooperation, to truly collaborate, to achieve meaningful and productive change, to ensure we make this great nation the wor in this world the bigger, faster, and strongest nation in the entire world. I love this country. The Teamsters love this country. Our 1.3 million members move America on the roads, in the ports, on the rail, and in the air. And at the end of the day, if the powers to be stop me from raising my voice on behalf of American workers, I will not have one single regret. I still carry my commercial driver's license. I still have my place on the union seniority list. You'll find me back in Boston driving a tractor trailer, delivering equipment for Shaughnessy and Ahern. Because I have the protection of a union contract that gives me the freedom to speak my mind and to fight like hell.